I'm planning to build a homestead in the San Luis Valley of Southern Colorado. I recently purchased 9.2 acres and I'm so excited to show it to you today. Ever since I started watching these TV shows about living off the land, specifically Mountain Men, Life Below Zero, Alone, and The Last Alaskans, I've wanted to live a similar lifestyle. As some of you know, I did a camper conversion along with my parents and our good friends Dick and Donna about two years ago. That video series has been really successful. So I'm envisioning this homestead project to be my camper conversion on steroids. Anyway, I drove down to visit my land for the first time just a few days ago. Let me show you exactly what it looks like. All right, first I'm gonna show you a quick snapshot of the piece of land, and then I'm gonna show you where it's at on the map of Colorado. So you're looking at a map of Colorado, and the perimeter of my land I walked it is actually a half a mile around the perimeter. And I'm right down there, just about 20 minutes east of Alamosa. So that gives you an idea, I'm down in the San Luis Valley. We'll talk more about that in my next video. All right, now this is a, as you saw, it was a corner lot, and I just wanna pan across really quick. There is um, a lot of stuff to do in that mountain right there. It's Blanca Peak. I'll tell you more about that in my following videos. All right, now I'm standing in the middle of my land. I'm gonna do a 360 degree view for you. It's obviously hard to tell where the boundaries are at, but it does give you an idea as to how wide open it is. And um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on while I was out there. There was a jackrabbit that came hauling across my property. There were some fighter jets. I found a lot of really cool stones. Uh, it was just a very good vibe from the beginning. But um, I can't wait to go hiking in those mountains right there. I mean, that, those mountains are just like two tenths of a mile from my piece of land. I'm so excited for this adventure. Now I'm going to do um, a zoom out. So that black piece of towel, if you can see it, is uh, the very corner of my property. So I'm standing in the middle of my land just doing a zoom out from that edge and then I'll do a zoom out from the other edge. This is with my um, Sony Handycam that records in 4K. The first video was my uh, GoPro 7 Silver. And then there is the other corner of the property. So there is a main road just about a mile and a half down there if you can see those cars driving by. but. Um, Man, I, I bought this land without ever even looking at it, and I'm just so happy that it turned out to be exactly everything that I wanted. So now I want to tell you some of my homestead project plans. Don't go anywhere. All right, first let's talk about the house that I'm hoping to build. I found this photo on Facebook a few weeks ago, and I really, really like it. It's kind of like a two-story tiny home. And I want to do a 360-degree deck around the top because I do have such beautiful views. And as I mentioned, the perimeter of my land is a half a mile around the perimeter, which gives me about 660 feet on each side. So I've got a lot of space to work with, and I would love to build a pole barn. The one in the photo here is kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a daydream, I guess. It's uh, above and beyond what I need, but I got to start somewhere. So this kind of gives you an idea of a few of the buildings I'm thinking about. Now let's talk about some of the activities and videos that I'm hoping to create. First off, I since I have so much land, I definitely want to do some goats and chickens and of course at least one dog. I learned a little bit about goats. I'll obviously have to do some research. Um, they do produce milk um, after they have a, a litter of kids. They'll produce milk for a couple of years, so that is one option. The soil is really, really sandy, so I'm gonna have to put up a greenhouse. Um, obviously wanna do some gardening, vegetables mainly, and um, after that, I'm gonna wanna learn how to do some food preservation. My grandmother was big into canning, and I've been learning a bit about food dehydration, so I'm excited to try some of that, as well as some composting, obviously, to produce some healthy soil. As many of you know, my family's in the greenhouse business, so I'm hoping to have a pretty substantial greenhouse on this piece of property. I understand that the, um, the township will allow everything except for pigs. So I was actually thinking about having one pig, but that's not an option. So chickens, goats, and dogs it is. Now let's talk about some of the accessories, I guess I'm calling them. 
Um, they haven't really run electricity out to this area, so I'm going to have to do solar panels, which is no problem. I use those in my camper all the time, and the uh, technology has come a long, long way, so I feel pretty confident in that. For the longest time, uh, I've been wanting a personal library. Again, this photo is a little bit of a daydream, but i got to start somewhere. I've got a lot of books, and um, there's something about just sitting and reading a book that I really enjoy. Because the soil is so sandy, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get trees to grow, but I did find out that native to the area is the narrow leaf cottonwood. And then a lot of pine trees grow in the higher elevations, so maybe some pine trees would be an option as well. And then um, I'm assuming I'm going to need a propane tank, probably a 500 gallon propane tank. And um, as you'll see in a minute, this area does not get much rainfall. So a rain collection cistern is not an option, so I will have to drill um, a water well, which I understand is not an issue in this area. There's pretty good water deposits below the earth. Now for the exciting part, let's talk about some of the mammals in the area. I found a pretty reliable source, the New Mexico Geological Society listed off a bunch of mammals in the area. Um, and there are tons of birds in the area, so I can't even begin to tell you how many birds there are. But as far as some of the mammals that I'm really excited about, um, we've got the pronghorn antelope, coyotes, the elk, and the mule deer. And then we also have some mountain lions, jackrabbits, bobcats, marmot, and pika. There's an additional list here that I'll put on the screen for you to look at. But uh, I love, love um, the wildlife. The only problem is I'm going to have to find a way to keep my chickens safe. So uh, I'll have to figure that out. Maybe have to do a nice secure chicken coop or something along those lines. Now, some of you know I'm big on number of days of sunshine. It affects my mood in a huge way. So let's talk about some of the weather in this area, specifically the days of sunshine and the average rainfall. And um, so let's see here. So as you can see, they don't get much rain. 8.4 inches per year is not a lot. This is almost like a desert area compared to the average in the United States is 38 inches. Um, sunshine though, we get 285 days of sunshine compared to the average of 205. I'm pretty excited about that. My understanding that what can constitutes a day of sunshine is one hour of sun of sunlight constitutes a day of sunshine. So that gives you an idea. Now let's talk about the average uh, temperatures. The summer, the average temperature, as you can see, around 81 degrees is ideal and the comfort index is 8.8. .8. But the winters look like they can be a bit brutal. The January low, the average January low is uh, two below zero. So the comfort index is only 5.2. At that point, it might be, we might change the name to misery index. <laughs> but I'm all right with that. Um, I love hiking in the winters and I love skiing and all that stuff. So I don't think that'll be an issue what could be an issue though, as some of you know, I stayed in Norris, Montana a couple years ago and the wind was driving me nuts. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner of this map, that is the um, percent of windy days per month in Norris, Montana. I mean, it is off the charts. 50% of the time, they get 25 mile an hour winds or greater. And I was just miserable when I was camping over there. It was blowing my camper all over the place. But I am happy to announce that I found a wind report for Blanca, Colorado, which is um, just a few miles from my property. And as you can see in the lower left-hand corner there, there is no wind to speak of, which um, is hit or miss in these mountains. A lot of times the mountains can produce these really, really strong winds. I think Colorado Springs get, gets uh, pretty heavy winds. So I was really happy to see that the wind is not going to be an issue here. So my next video, I actually am going to, it's going to be titled Top Things to Do Near Alamosa, Colorado. The website alamosa.org lists off, oh man, probably over a hundred things to do. Hiking trails and the great sand dunes 
and Colorado Gators and the UFO Watchtower. I mean, there is like tons and tons, hot springs, lots of cool stuff to do. So that will be my next video. You'll be able to see exactly what types of activities there are to do in this area. But as I leave you, um, I did capture video of the fighter jets that flew overhead. They're a little bit hard to spot, but you can definitely hear them. But that's all I've got for you today. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep an eye open for upcoming Homestead Project videos. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.